Musar moments. In the introduction to what is perhaps his greatest work ever, Mesilat Yesharim, which literally means the path of the upright, Rabbi Moses Chaim Luzato, or the Ramchal for short, writes the following. I have composed this work not to teach people what they do not know, but to remind them of what they already know and which is very familiar to them. For you will find in most of my words only things which most people already know and do not have any doubt about. Okay, so I find that a very curious statement to begin a text. If the reader is already well aware of what the author has to say, what then is the point of reading the text? Well, the Ramchal explains a bit later that it is because of our great familiarity with the matter he discusses is the very reason that we would be forgetful about it. Just a single reading of this classic of Musar literature would probably not teach you anything new that you don't already know. But by returning to the text numerous times would bring about greater clarity and a better appreciation for what the book has to say. Well, what exactly is Musar? A Musar is a 1,000-year-old Jewish spiritual practice originating in Lithuania that teaches how to find those things inside that cause us to get stuck in the same place again and again. Musar offers us a framework for gradually bringing about balance and healing through mindful living and small incremental steps. Musar teaches that we all have the same soul traits, such as humility, patience, order, and awe. However, we all have different amounts of each one. Thus, a scattered person, like me, still has the trait of order, just far less than someone who is obsessive-compulsive. The end result is a practice that teaches you how to become a mensch, which means an exemplary person. We all have what it takes to be a mensch, and Musar provides a supportive framework to set the mensch within free. The greatest beauty of Musar is that its teachings can apply to anyone. It doesn't matter if you're Jewish or Gentile, male or female, young or old, gay or straight, disabled or not, rich or poor, because its knowledge is universal. Musar can be applied by anyone, no matter what your circumstances are in life. You don't have to see the whole stairway. You just have to keep taking one more step upward. I'll close the video with this thought. From Mesilat Yesharim, in chapter 19. And the test of this love is hardship and adversity. Commenting upon the commandment, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy soul and with all thy might. Deuteronomy 6, 5. The sages added, with all thy soul means even the cost of your life, and with all thy might means even the cost of your possessions, says the Talmud in Barachot 54a. In order, however, that hardship and adversity may not render it difficult for us to love God, there are two modes of reasoning in which we may resort. One mode of reasoning will appeal, appeal to the average person, the other to the wise and profound mind. One mode of reasoning is whatever heaven does is for the best. Barachot 60b. This means that even suffering and hardship are only apparently evil, but in reality they are good. The surgeon amputates a muscle or a limb which has been injured in order to preserve the health of the rest of the body and to save the person from death. Although this seems cruel, it is in reality an act of mercy 
and meant for the good of the person upon whom it is performed. That patient does not love the surgeon any the less because of what he has done to him. On the contrary, he loves him all the more. And in like manner, if a man were to realize that whatever the Holy One, blessed is he, does to him, whether it affects his body or his possessions, is intended for his own benefit, neither suffering nor hardship would lessen his love for God in any way, though he may little understand how he is benefited. On the contrary, his love for God would become even more intense and ever fervent. That is my Musar moment for today. Shavuotov Lehitrov.